Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the man, myth, the legend, and somebody who educated me on video number one about how to make a ton of money with virtual real estate. Mr. Dion from Dion Doc. How you doing, sir? Howdy, Mike. Doing great. Ready for round two and going to be a little less nerdy this video. <laughs> I love video one because, again, you can make real money in the metaverse and you've done it. You've been doing it since the 90s. Uh, it is... Um, it's something that I need to appreciate because I, I just didn't get it. Now I do. So thank you for that. What I want to do in video number two is talk about Meet Kevin. Uh, Meet Kevin has, uh, he's been going through some interesting gyrations. Uh, I've actually been lucky enough to interview him years ago. I actually put his story in my second book. Uh, it's, a very, it's a real estate story, 203K loans and all of these great things. So uh, I value his real estate experience, especially his early story. But man, he went stimulus. He ran for California governor. Now he's trading stocks and looking at candles all the time. And he's, uh, he's, he's, he's going through some stuff right now. So uh, what, what have you seen here uh, recently? What I like about investing is we seem to almost all, especially here in YouTube University, go through this arc mm -hmm. where we start absorbing content. Yeah. And a lot of times I see the question of, and this comes up in the Facebook group often, you know, book recommendations to get a teenager involved in real estate or yeah. investing. Yeah. And I think it's the wrong question. Instead of how do I find a book that my teenager would want? The question should be, how do I change the way I think people learn to understand that teenagers aren't reading books, exactly. their podcast, audiobook, YouTube university, they're absorbing content this way. Mm -hmm. So that person who's looking to educate their teenager, I usually recommend meet Kevin, Graham Stephan and Minority Mindset for the, for the younger audience, right? Yeah. For the, for the people that aren't, you know, under 20, it's, it's one rental at a time, Matt the Lumberjack Landlord, like the, our content. Right. But I caveat it with meet Kevin, anything older than two years, Graham Stephan, anything older than two years and Minority Mindset. Like those are the three things that I go to. Mm -hmm. And because just about two years ago, meet Kevin switched to uh, stimulus and they needed we do three or four stimulus videos a day a and it day. really helped him blow up I get it it was where the it was where the views were mm -hmm. and now he's he's you know uh, more stock related he's more into getting people to watch his content which yeah. I get that's the point of his YouTube channel Graham Stephan was the same way his early real estate videos were great this is house hacking in an expensive LA market yeah, this is how right. a real estate agent grew his his business all of that content helped me then he became reacting to videos yeah so that's why i say older than two years because everything's been reacting to for the last two years with me kevin and i liked in his last video that just came out it was a short one i still watch his content once mm -hmm. in a while I, I i avoid something that says running for governor or stimulus I, yeah i, can, you know, those <laughs> I don't need that <laughs> but every now and then graham yeah. or meet kevin will actually do a fundamental video Yes. And I'll go, okay, they're repeating their good content. I will go watch that again. Cause it's that constant reiteration yeah. that helps it sink in and be subconscious. He said that he was turning off his comments yeah. because of the haters that were coming out. And believe me, I get the haters come out. If I mention anything about how I'm just this much disinterested in crypto, <laughs> yeah. it's comment after comment after comment about how old I am or that. And like your other um, guest, we are not boomers. We're Gen X. So every yeah. boomer that dislikes a millennial and every millennial that dislikes a boomer needs to remember that there's a generation in the middle yeah, there's that one don't between. likes either of you. <laughs> <laughs> so <That's true. clears throat> I try not to do anything with, I have a video coming out soon on my opinions of crypto and I guarantee haters are going to come out. I leave the comments on. I actually like to try to have a conversation with the people. And if they have logic, great. If they're just emotion, because People get upset when you threaten their source of income. I understand it. Mm -hmm. But Kevin said he has a choice. Do I leave comment? Do I quit YouTube? <laughs> do I just stop putting content out? Does he pretend on YouTube and say, here's what I want everyone to do and then hide and actually do what he's really doing? Because he seemed to upset a lot of people when he went from, and you said this earlier off air, from the biggest bull to a bear. Like, just get rid of everything. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a moment. And again, I feel for the guy because I went through a similar non-public area with, with a few less zeros. But I was, I was winning, winning on winning, which he was. He was buying the dip. He was doing the, He was investing in the most, I don't know, I would call it speculative areas and crushing it. 
But when you switch from a bull to a bear market and you don't realize it, it hurts. It hurt for a long time. He lost millions of dollars. And one day, I guess a month ago now, maybe three weeks ago, he cried uncle, sold everything. Seemed like spur of the moment. But I, I, there was a tweet that actually I saw on my phone while I was watching a Warriors game. Uh, somebody asked, like, what do you do? And he said, sell everything. I was like the answer in his tweet. And sure enough, the next morning, he had sold everything. I remember that emotion. I was in Europe after suffering my second catastrophic loss. And I did the same thing, just pulled the ripcord, didn't think about it. I remember how that felt. Uh, and he went through it in a much more public arena. Unfortunately, he now has 12 or 18 months of buy the dip and everything's a bull and go get them and we're going to win and chart, 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 chart. Content and people, even though he says it's not financial advice, people were clearly following him. He sold, they didn't. They continued to lose, and man, he gets some freaking hate. Whoa. And one of the problems is the scale. Yeah. When we talk about he had a $20 million portfolio, sold everything to reallocate or whatever, whatever his strategy is next, which I'm sure there'll be content made for, which oh, I'm sure. is great. Yeah. He was making a million dollars a month on YouTube. At least a million right. dollars so, a month. <laughs> so $12 million a year. He sold less than two years' income. To redistribute, that would be for you know the average income is what fifty seven thousand dollars or something. Roughly, something. Yeah. I remember yeah. looking the other day. Yeah. So that would be one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars that someone sure. else sold their entire portfolio to reallocate. That's not, you know, a life's work. That's that's two years worth of income. Twenty million dollars, <laughs> even for very successful investors who aren't making a million dollars a month off of YouTube, is a life's work. Yeah. Um, so hopefully people understand the economy of scale. That when he says, at my income level, this is what makes sense. That doesn't mean that's what makes sense to the person making $57,000 a year. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I get all of that. But dude, I mean, if, if, if somebody's screaming at you, buy the dip, buy the dip. And you've, we've all seen the memes. You're the dip, you're the dip, you're the dip, you're the dip, right? That whole, that meme. Right. But um, you got to get it though. I mean, people, people lost a lot of money. And for whatever reason, you know, he's getting some, some heat. Yeah, no, and I get that. And what's, what's frustrating is he was saying, this is what's working for me. This is what's working for me. Okay, I've changed my mind. This is what I'm going to do. And everybody's upset. There are content creators who for not quite 10 years, but since 2013, have been putting out videos on the crash or the correction is right around the corner. Don't <laughs> yeah. invest, don't invest. So we're talking about eight years nine years now of people missing out on cash flow appreciation and principal pay down and those channels still get views i know they're still saying <laughs> crash is right around the corner Where, where's the anger and upset of the literally hundreds of thousands of me personally if i had listened to those videos i would have lost a net worth of over two million dollars yeah. if i waited for the crash or the dip like they're suggesting yeah. i would be furious if i had been listening to those channels yeah yeah, again, it goes back to do the work. I mean, this thing, right? Do the work for yourself. I mean, it's the saying that I say most of the time. Do the work for yourself. Don't listen to anyone. Don't follow any talking head. Don't follow us blindly. Do the work in your market. Figure out average. Once you know average, go do good or great. But that's a you thing, not a me thing. You can't invest in my market without doing the same work I've done. Go do the work. Don't just copy Kevin because he's talking about this or that stock which I know there were lots of people that did. And it worked for a while. I remember that feeling. You feel like you can't lose. You feel like you're on cloud nine. And then you get a rug pull and you feel so disappointed and you want to blame someone else. I have words for you. Blame yourself. So I'm hoping that Kevin just remains transparent and he doesn't go with the option where he says this online, but actually does something else in person. One of the things I like about our content is, is we are transparent. Oh, yeah. Here's the deals that went great. Here's the deals that didn't. Here's how you, you created an alligator. I, I, I did. Ran it, um, I didn't run it like a business, you know, rented to a friend with no lease. With <laughs> like all the that. mistakes we've made, yeah. we put it out there. And we're never telling somebody, in your market, like I don't say, in your market, buy small multifamily and house act because that's the only strategy that will work. That no. We never say that. We no. say- figure out the strategy that works in your market 
and then learn the fundamentals of what is cash flow. How do you calculate yield? What are the ways to, to try to maintain your tenants and limit tenant turnover? Like the exactly. basics, but not the investing strategy because somebody investing in my market mm -hmm. is going to have a different debt to income ratio. They're going Absolutely. to have a different family setup. They're going to have a different goal than mine. Like I really like working with you and Matt, mm -hmm. the lumberjack landlord, because your goals were to, it seems, mm -hmm. grow a massive portfolio that, that has grown 10 plus times the size of my portfolio. Mm -hmm. My goal is different. And yeah. so just interacting with you guys helps me kind of expand my envelope some. Yeah. And you did really well there. I tried to distract you. It didn't work. With the dog. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was so hard. I was like, oh, the screen. I see the puppy. <laughs> I tried to distract you. It didn't work. Sorry. I was having fun. That's okay. <laughs> I am definitely, um, I'm not really a dog or cat person. I'm a pet person, whichever yeah. animal's in the room. I like pets. So. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, again, I, what I would tell me, Kevin, today is, Again, it's, the zeros are way off, but I remember that feeling. Uh, actually, I, said, I publicly replied to his tweet, I think, and I said, Kevin, you need to take a week off because he looks at the can. If, again, if what he's putting out there is what he really does and he's staring at these minute by minute candles, it's going to dry. He needs to pull himself out of that muck and mire, go reset, go realize he already has enough to make generations of his family good. He doesn't need to gamble, doesn't need to be on margin. He he, he also has a fascination, which I get with trying to be right. You don't need to be in, in, in stocks. If you're trying to be right 80% of the time, you're fooling yourself. You just got to be right 60% of the time. And, and as long as you have stop losses to protect the downside, you'll be wildly successful. So I would tell him, and again, he just had his birthday. He took some time off to ski. Again, I watch this stuff that I think is relevant, but sometimes you just got to pull up, pull up pull up, get out, just take a break. I like how you point out that you don't need to be right all the time. Whenever I, whenever I think about investing, I know I don't make very many sports ball references, but <laughs> I associate investing more with baseball than with football. Yes. Because in baseball, you can lose over 50 games in a season, probably over 60, mm -hmm. and be the world champion. Oh, for <laughs> like, sure. Because 180 games in a season, you can lose that many and still be, the and that's not the way it is in football. Yeah. So yes, we're, we're going to make a lot of mistakes with investing. You just need to be, I don't want to say that's right. You need to be following the fundamentals and playing a long game and not watch, like you said, the minute by minute, because that'll drive you crazy. Yeah, one more spark, sports ball analogy for you. If you um, are out seven out of 10 times, you could very likely end up in the Hall of Fame. All right, if you bat 300 for your, um, for your career, you could end up in the Hall of Fame. Seven so. out of three times would be a lot of touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of three-point baskets and uh, goals. Right. <laughs> oh, man, Dion, this is always fun. I look forward to uh, the three amigos on Thursday. Thank, Thank you, you for giving us time uh, today. Where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk. Financial freedom, not sports ball freedom. Yes, yeah, not sports ball freedom. <laughs> oh, man, this is amazing. Thanks, Thank you, Dion. Take care. Ciao. Yeah.